Hi guys, it's Serena. Welcome back to my channel. I am done with homeschool for the day and my husband is home. We are about to head out for a date night because the grandparents have the kids and I thought this was the perfect time to sit down and try to film um, the second assignment for the virtual homeschool co-op. And I think this week's assignment, which I'm a little bit behind, so I'm trying to catch up, is about um, handling discouraging people. Is it discouraging people? Hold on, let me see. Hold on, just one second, please. <laughs> okay, yeah. How do you handle people discouraging your homeschool? And at first, I wasn't really going to try and tackle this video because in reality um i really don't have to deal with that so i have been super blessed with friends and family who are very encouraging um on my homeschool journey i'm not sure how much i was going to have to say about this um because they have been so encouraging um they help out in as many ways as possible. Um, they buy homeschooling supplies and send them over to me. They send over um, different ideas and things that we can do with the kids. Um, they come along for field trips. Um, I even have family members that invest in our homeschool and send us support monthly um, so that we can do some of the things that we wouldn't otherwise be able to do so i've been super blessed with people that are very 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 um supportive and encouraging as we um move along in our homeschool journey so i'm really grateful for that and then i just thought about like what i could possibly say um you know just to add a little something to the assignment i guess and uh one thing i will tell you is that when i started homeschool i do not come from a homeschooling family i did not know that it was even a thing i did not know that people homeschooled i went to a public school and i thought that was the only way you could do it so when homeschooling uh came along for us it was totally new i was totally nervous and man it was just it was just rough um and now looking back on that i would say that my biggest help in transitioning into homeschool was isolation and i know that sounds a little strange because isolation doesn't often seem like a good thing but in this case it was i had um been impressed upon um, by the Lord to homeschool. I had no idea what I was doing and um, I ended up in a way isolating myself. I didn't and what I mean by that is I didn't really give other people any space to have an opinion. I knew what um, I felt like God wanted me to try or to do or to step into whatever you want to call it and I was focused on that. I was determined that I was going to um, try to educate myself as much as possible but more than educating myself on homeschooling i really just jumped in you just i just did it you know and along the way i was opened to um just surrendering and allowing god to teach me how to do it the right way for our family and did i get everything right probably not but um part of moving along in life and experiencing new things is just to do and learn from your mistakes and not be so hard on yourself and accept the grace that is freely given to you and keep it moving so that's basically what i did and now um being three almost four years into it i can look back and i have heard little things of different family members who are super supportive um maybe mentioning how such and such said or whatever that they were a little bit concerned and so i guess they had those feelings but i get it because i had those feelings but they never said anything to me about it and i think that's mainly because i didn't really give anybody else any um any space to have an opinion about it I, I guess i just felt like these were my children and i'm ultimately responsible for them and their growth and their education and so um when when homeschooling came you know as an option for me i just went with it and um 
yeah, that was that. I really didn't, I mean, I asked, Brian, it was new to my husband, homeschooling was completely new to him as well, and he maybe had a few reservations in the beginning, maybe even more, but I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't really give him too much space <laughs> to, um, to disagree. Like, obviously, I'm not gonna go completely against you know, something that he felt strongly about, but I just, I prayed and believed that if it was the right direction that, you know, things would just work out and they did, um, they just did. So yeah, I guess what I'm saying is that I really didn't, I don't give people any space to have an opinion about what we decide to do as far as educating our children and that doesn't mean that I'm not open to suggestions um, or what you know people that mean something to me um, think is just that I I really try to go based off of what I observe and what I what I observe and what I see from my children and I saw that they were responding well to being with one another to being with me and to me presenting to them resources and us all jumping on it as a family and I saw the fruit of that and it was good and so I continued to move on now um, I, I really tried to think like if ever I came across someone, I, I mean, I have been maybe at the doctor or something and you'll have someone that has some questions about how we do it or how we, um, how we keep track of things or some of its challenges. And I'm okay with answering those types of questions. Um, if I'm not, I don't entertain it because there are moments where I feel doubtful or I feel like I'm not good enough as a, um, you know, as a homeschool teacher or whatever. And whenever I feel like that, I try to be careful not to reach out to others for um, opinions, um, especially people who don't know of homeschooling. When I do have feelings like that, I reach out to other homeschool moms, other homeschool moms, seasoned homeschool moms. So. I have a few groups that I belong to and they have been like super duper supportive and helpful when I have those moments where I feel like I'm just like inadequate. And so I reach out to them and I and I value their opinion because I know that they've been doing it for years and years and have graduated children um, out of their own homeschools. And so in my opinion, they have place, you know, to give me their opinions. And even then I decide whether or not um, it's in line with what I believe, you know, our family goals are and what the Lord is saying to me about um, how we school our children so um anyway yeah overall basically the bottom line is that i really don't experience um any discouragement and even if i did i wouldn't give it any weight i wouldn't and i don't want to say any weight i just i just don't even entertain it at all because i know that it would like grab a hold to a spot in my heart and the moment when I'm weak, you know, I'll remember those words. So if someone were to start to say something that was kind of negative, I completely cut it off and, and move on with life. I don't even allow myself to hear those negative things because I don't have time for them. <laughs> you know, like, and, and, and I do, I have those, I have plenty of moments where I feel weak and inadequate and I don't think that um, a w one major person or support for me, especially in the um, beginning years of homeschooling, was my best friend. And she tried homeschooling a few years, but I guess the biggest deal, um, the most help that she was to me is that she is actually an educator. She's been a teacher for several years now. And so whenever I had moments where I felt inadequate about a certain area, I would um, confide in her. And she would always reassure me that, you know, that she's not, she would let me know what it was like from her perspective in the classroom as a teacher. Um, and she would let me know that the things that I was experiencing was the same things that they experienced inside of the classroom. And that was really, really um, encouraging for me and always kept me going to know that, you know, this is not abnormal. And um, if they're capable of um, 
providing a way for the children in the school to be able to learn then I can do the same things and do I feel like I know you know I oftentimes oh I did have someone in the doctor's office was in the doctor's office asked me about um well do you feel like you're qualified to teach them in all the areas that they you know need to learn in and I'm not exactly sure I don't remember how I replied to them but whatever it was they were somewhat impressed and I just felt like who's Who's qualified to teach someone in all areas? No one. But um, I love my children enough to find someone that can give them what they need. And I think that's what the ultimate teacher is, is to be able to help you in the stuff that they can help you in. And when they can help you, they find a way to get you what you need. And that is what homeschooling is for me and for us. So anyway, I made this a lot longer than it needed to be, sorry. Um, but I thought I would just drop in before we head out and try to record um, this assignment. So that's basically uh, my experience uh, so far. And I would say that if you're experiencing a lot of discouragement from people, like, cut it off. <laughs> like, you decided what you were going to do for the time being. And we take it one year at a time, although I am committed to the journey. Um, but I don't want to be blind to if there are changes that need to be made, you know, uh, just refusing to make them to prove a point. That's not what I'm about. As long as I see the fruit of homeschooling, I will continue. And I am committed for the long run. And so because of that and because of my commitment to it, I'm just not going to give certain people any space to have any say so in our school I don't entertain it and I that's what I would suggest like when and you know those people those people that are going down the wrong road now there are people that are just genuinely interested and you know they they are curious about homeschool and I think that those things are fine to entertain because I have those questions and I still have those questions like I still have those questions about how to homeschool you know um middle school age children or uh high school age or into college like I mean I have those questions so I don't mind answering questions from people that genuinely um are interested and you know curious about it but if you're gonna bring a bunch of negativity to the table like I'm not here for it so <laughs> I don't entertain it so anyway I hope you enjoyed this video I hope it's not too bright because I, I thought it was okay but I'm not exactly sure um, anyway this was another little chit chat and I really enjoyed um, making these two videos for the homeschool co-op the virtual homeschool co-op so I think I can leave a link below for you to follow um, other people's videos um that go along with this assignment so i thought it was a really cool idea and i might as well just um join in because it's what you should do when you're trying to be part of a wonderful community <laughs> anyway let me go i'm going to spend some time with my husband while my kids are hanging out with their grandparents and i hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up to let me know that you like videos like these and if you would like to follow us along and you haven't already then just make sure that you hit that button to subscribe and i will see you guys in the next video